Hello, and welcome back to the Telvin. What the f Are you seriously doing this right now? Well, you have company. Can you do this tomorrow? Welcome back to the television show. Now with over 30,000 subscribers. Ah, oh, that's a decimal point. Yeah, that makes much more sense. Sorry about that. 30. Oh, that's depressing. The 2014 to 2015 television season recently ended, and today I want to break down the end season ratings averages for NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and the CW. The goal today is to determine the winner of this past television season. It's no secret that television viewership has been on the decline over the past half decade. First it was the rise of TiVo and DVR, and now it's online streaming services such as Hulu and Netflix. In 2013, Americans watched, on average, 147 hours of television a month. Last year, in 2014, that number went down to 141 hours per month, showing a decline in viewership. The broadcast networks have fared far worse than the cable and premium cable networks during this time. Let's take a look at where the networks were five years ago. During the 2009 to 2010 television season, Fox was the most watched network, averaging a 3.7 rating in primetime viewership. CBS was second with a 3.2 average, and ABC and NBC were tied with a 2.7. The CW, which is in a league of its own, earned a .9 rating. Remember, one ratings point is equal to 1% of the potential 18 to 49 year old viewing audience, and is how shows and networks are measured by advertisers. So five years ago, the best network finished with a 3.7 rating, and the worst with a 2.7. Fast forward five years, and the winner of the 2014 to 2015 broadcast season earned a 2.4 rating, worse than the worst network five years ago. I could make a series of videos detailing why this drop-off happened, and one day I might, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, what am I here to talk about again today? Oh yeah, what network won the season. Alright, let's dig in. In fifth place, it's the CW. Like I said earlier, the CW is in a league of its own and not in competition with the big four networks as they're called. This year, the CW averaged a .8 rating, same place as last year, and within its normal range of 7 tenths to a full point. The Flash was the most watched show on the CW, followed by fellow superhero show Arrow, and long-running supernatural dramas Supernatural and The Vampire Diaries. In fourth place, Fox registered a meager 1.9 rating, drastically down from the 2.5 rating it held in each of the past two seasons. This is also considerably down from the 3.7 rating it held half a decade ago. In the long run, Fox's decline in viewership can be attributed to the loss of its signature franchises, including House and Fringe, as well as diminishing returns on longtime franchises American Idol, Bones, and most significantly, Glee, whose ratings dropped from a 4.6 five years ago to a .7 this year. Additionally, Fox tried and failed to launch new detective dramas with Grace Point and Backstrom, as well as several new comedies, including Mulaney and Weird Loners. It did, however, find success with Will Forte's The Last Man on Earth. Finally, Fox launched the biggest new show in the history of television, and that is not hyperbole. Here are some facts about Empire's rise to television dominance. Empire is the first television show in 23 years to have its viewership rise week to week for its first five weeks. Empire's viewership had the biggest viewership for any show's first season since Grey's Anatomy in 2005. Viewership on Empire rose 82% from its season premiere to its season finale. Speaking of Empire's season finale, it was the most watched hour of any television drama since October of 2008. Empire was the most watched show on broadcast television this year, and despite its gargantuan viewership, Fox was still fourth overall. Third place goes to ABC, who averaged a 2.2 rating on the year, and was the only one of the big four networks to actually increase its viewership from last year, when it held a 2.1. How to Get Away with Murder, starring Viola Davis, was the second most watched new drama this year, and helped anchor the network's Thank God It's Thursday lineup, a set of three primetime female-led dramas for mega-producer Shonda Rhimes. New sitcoms Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat have made ABC one of the most diverse networks in regard to sitcoms, and both are much better efforts at cultural satire than NBC's Outsourced from 2010. Here's to pretending that never happened. <clears throat> Resurrection, which premiered last spring on ABC to a 3.9 rating, and was the second highest debut of a drama last year, 
fell off the map this season, with its ratings falling to a 1.0 in its second season finale, on way to cancellation. Forever was the highest rated show this season to be cancelled by any of the networks. Despite finishing in third place, ABC's increase in viewership over last year can only really be seen as a victory when considering that overall television viewership is on the decline. Now you can figure out by the process of elimination that NBC and CBS take up the top two spots in this year's list. Technically and officially, NBC did win this season with CBS in a close second. However, it is a hollow victory and an undeserving victory for reasons I'll get to in a moment. CBS earned a 2.3 rating this year, down from last year's 2.4 and the year before that when they had a 2.9. In regards to total viewership, which doesn't matter to advertisers but looks good on paper, CBS beat NBC with 11.3 million viewers compared to NBC's 8.6 million. This is more of a moral victory than anything else because it's only the 18 to 49 year old viewers that matter to the advertisers. CBS's ratings are bolstered by the second most watched show on television, The Big Bang Theory, as well as many other well-rated sitcoms including Two and a Half Men in its final season and The Odd Couple in its first season. New Dramas Scorpion and NCIS New Orleans were the fourth and fifth most watched new dramas this year. Criminal Minds in its tenth season was the fourth most watched returning drama. The demise of the CSI franchise was a major storyline for CBS this year. The mothership of the franchise saw a reduced episode order this year, 18 episodes instead of the normal 22. This was an early sign that CBS was preparing to end the long-running series. It was in a very similar situation as NBC's Law & Order, which was cancelled seemingly out of nowhere in May of 2010, after 20 long years on the air and close to becoming the longest-running primetime drama in American television history. Instead of cancelling CSI outright, the network announced that the franchise will conclude with a two-hour television movie in the fall, after which Ted Danson will move to the CSI Cyber spin-off. Stalker was the only CBS show really up in the air going into the upfronts, and it was axed, making it the second show in two years on CBS starring Dylan McDermott to not survive for a second season. And now on to NBC, your technical winner of the 2014-2015 broadcast season. NBC finished the year with a 2.4 average rating, down from last year's 2.7. This marks NBC's second consecutive victory, a major difference from half a decade ago when NBC was consistently in last place among the major networks. A couple of months ago, I speculated on if Comcast had been able to save the network it purchased in 2009. Given NBC's rating success over the past two years relative to the other networks, I'd say it's fair to conclude that Comcast has been successful, if not in saving NBC, then at least minimizing the diminishing ratings returns that all the networks have been experiencing. Five years ago, NBC was the least watched network with a 2.7 rating, and this year they were the most watched with a 2.4 rating. I think that speaks more to the decline of live television viewership overall than it does to Comcast's management of NBC in recent years. This year, NBC didn't have any of the top returning or new sitcoms or any new hit dramas. Among the 30 most watched scripted shows on broadcast television this year, only one was on NBC and yes, it was James Spader's The Blacklist. Other shows with somewhat respectable viewership on NBC included Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, and Law & Order SVU. NBC's top show was reality singing competition The Voice, which aired twice a week, both in the fall and the spring this year. Saturday Night Live's 40th anniversary special was a very bright spot on NBC's schedule this year, as the event recorded a 7.8 rating and over 20 million viewers. NBC once again failed to launch new programming, and their long list of canceled shows this year include dramas Allegiance, that one show that's totally not The Americans, and State of Affairs, that one show that's totally not Homeland. So if NBC can't find viewership, how did they win the year? Here's how. You're invited to an all-day Super Bowl party on NBC. NBC had the honor of broadcasting this year's Super Bowl, which was the most watched telecast in American television history, with over 114 million viewers and a 47.5 18 to 49 rating. This heavily skews the ratings and is the only reason why NBC beat CBS this year. Take out the Super Bowl, and NBC's average rating falls to a 2.2 below CBS and even with ABC. An episode of The Blacklist that aired right after the Super Bowl recorded an 8.7 rating. That single episode's enormous viewership is a big reason why The Blacklist ranked second among returning dramas this year. Without the Super Bowl, NBC would not have had much to have been proud about, and it's why their victory this year is very hollow. Next year, CBS will broadcast the Super Bowl, and I expect them to win the season even without that extra ratings boost. 
I hope you enjoyed my recap of the 2014 and 2015 ratings season. Thank you for watching this episode of The Television Show, and stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie, but before you go, I've got some news regarding my summer plans. I'm going to be spending the second half of this summer in Los Angeles, the television capital of Southern California. While being in this city would be an incredible opportunity to help grow my channel, I will be there working, so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to take advantage of the opportunity. I'll keep you updated as this story develops here on TV Junkie.